Good morning, YouTube. We are able to actually sleep a little bit more this morning, so we're getting in here a little later than usual, 6.30. Um, back, bicep day, pull day. So starting off with movements that we need to work on the most, this wider grip, kind of flat pull down, being one of the movements that's really tricky if we have it on later in the workout. So starting with it instead, trying to get a really good stretch, good sensation, get full range, slight pause, big, big stretch at the top. General theme for all my workouts. Maximize that lengthen position, get a good solid contraction, mind to muscle connection, and just push, 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 or in this case, pull, but push the intensity. We'll get one more set here with a little bit of a back down. So uh, weight's just slightly lower than our three first working sets. And uh, we'll just try to get a lot of good blood flow, getting a good stimulus, good stretch, good range of motion here, throwing this movement at the beginning. So definitely gonna continue that trend more often. Um, just because this is kind of a movement that I'm really, really weak in, but definitely a lot more of an indication of being too fatigued whenever I get to this movement because I'm hitting well beyond all my rep goals that I typically hit, if according to my long book, but also higher weight too. So that's encouraging. So yeah, going a little heavier now, closer grip, more just lat bias, keeping the elbows really close, really tight. And shout out GPA, my friend Jess up in New York has her own clothing company. So she doesn't drop a whole lot of men's clothes very often, but she has really good leggings and stuff. But yeah, she dropped this shirt, sold out in like 10 seconds, but luckily she sent me one. So. GPA, activewear, get peachy, amici. Shout out Jess, good stuff.
Whew. Oh man, lats are pumping right now. It's feeling really good. Just focus on driving my elbows down, straight down. Like I'm kind of just pushing something down with my elbows and then just get that big stretch at the top. So moving on to chest supported rows here. We'll be here for a while because we're gonna hit two arm rows and single arm rows, both on this machine. But yeah, again, anytime you see me using one of these prime machines, the focus is high force output, good quality muscle contraction, not really trying to like move slow or move with a lot of controlled tempo, just try to get full range of motion and kind of just train aggressively. Hit a little performance pin set on the last set here. Uh, was able to get, I think, 15 reps without, which is what we'll enter into the logbook, and then we'll add a note with the additional reps. But I always have to go back and rewatch those because I never really count once it comes to the pin popping. Move on to single arm rows now. On these, really just making sure I'm not rotating. So once I start feeling like I'm really starting to use core rotation to move the weight, really your lat's not getting much range of motion, much activation at that point. So form failure to a certain degree, sadly.
one more set here. So we'll get a back down, drop the weight a little bit with a performance pin. Again, just kind of keep pumping, get a lot of blood flow so we don't have that fail your form failure issue. feels good. Okay, so not entirely done with rowing variations. We're gonna do a rear delt row um, over on the seated cable. Really just focus on trying to get a lot of rear delt activation with some heavier loads before we go into rear delt flies. So big focus here is again, rear delt activation. So elbows are kind of at about a 45 degree angle. That's why we're using these splitter bar to be able to manipulate hand position, elbow position, elbow relation to the rear delt. And just trying to focus on driving the elbows kind of in like a downward V motion. So we can really just try to lengthen the rear delt as much as possible and then drive back until we feel like maybe the traps or the rhomboids are starting to kind of kick in and take over a little bit. Just trying to keep everything kind of high up here but that elbow angle is crucial.
So big focus with the rear delts here to be able to isolate is starting off with the handles a little bit above your shoulder height. And then a big thing too is making sure you're kind of rotating, almost internally rotating that shoulder in just a little bit so your elbow is pointing straight out, not downward. I got those two tips from Hypertrophy Coach. And then obviously one thing that I feel like everyone should know by now is focus on width, not retraction, not trying to drive your arms back, but trying to drive your arms as wide as possible. That way you can isolate the rear delt for as long as possible. Another big thing is just get as much movement and reps as you can, even partial reps, because the rear delts are very hard to grow. They need a lot of volume, a lot of stimulus. So don't gauge your failure with this movement based on you not being able to get all the way back here again, because that length and range where that rear delt's gonna be really isolated is really gonna get a lot of that growth. So just get to the point where you can't move the weight anymore, even right here. Okay, bicep time. Really just love this bicep curl variation, starting off slightly behind the body. So we're getting into that stretch position early and then just focusing on touching the forearm to the bicep without driving the elbow forward. So that way you know you're not using front delt as much as possible. You're just isolating that bicep. But I think one big mistake I see a lot of these people doing is they put the arms way too low so you really don't feel a lot of tension in that bottom position. You feel it just kind of upwards towards the top as you move kind of more in an upward angle. So place it kind of like around maybe like mid thigh. And that way you're pretty much just right in line with where your hand would naturally fall. And that way you have tension at the very beginning and all the way to the top too.
So now, going with a more shortened bias, a uh, curl motion, weight being in front of you, really emphasizing that shortened position where that peak contraction is gonna take place at the very top. Peak contraction, as opposed to when we're facing away, the weight's behind us. And again, forcing more tension in the bicep in the loaded, lengthened position. So, always gotta hit both. Again, full spectrum training, try to lengthen and shorten the muscle and bias both differently. Because really, especially as a bodybuilder, that mind to muscle connection when you're actually posing and like contracting the bicep, it's super crucial and a lot of that's gonna come from shortened contractions. So length and bias, of course, super important for growing the muscle, but you gotta have that shortened bias too. Otherwise, that mind to muscle connection is gonna be kind of incomplete. little eccentric focused bicep training here. Feeling really good, feeling really pumped. That Zeus juice. Last set here, and then we're gonna get a little abs. Not too much, just enough.
Okay. Some hanging ab tucks. And then we will be done for now. We're gonna hit some cardio later today because we'll have to come back up here, train a few clients, do a little rehab project on one of our other competitors. Um, see if we can nurse back a partially torn quad tendon. Um, good thing it's just partial, but we'll see what we can do with advances in modern technology. And uh, we'll see, compounds. Just two sets here, trying to really focus on eccentric loading, of course, so we can get those abs really lengthened, stretched. And then just trying to focus on keeping my knees more in front of my body as I pull up. That way I'm not using a whole lot of hip flexor. So again, just trying to make the abs do all the work. Just keep them under constant tension, good stretch, and then work on little vacuums in between much harder to pull a vacuum after you've pumped your abs up a little bit or eaten food. So I'm trying to just make the vacuums harder. So when I'm empty and fresh, they're a little easier. Not a movement you really get to failure on very often, but it happens. I literally just couldn't pick my knees up anymore. But as a wrap for today, Bo Alexander, Adapt Fitness, working on our vacuums during the outro. We'll see you tomorrow for leg day and have some check-in updates. Maybe get some more calories. We'll see.